travel my way, take the highway, that's the best. Get your kicks on Route 66. It winds from Chicago to L.A. More than 2,000 miles all the way. Get your kicks on Route 66. You know, every town we come to here along Route 66, I feel like I belong here. Like uh, I'm part of every small town. And I don't want to leave. I don't know what that's about. It either has to do with um, uh, a part of America in the past that's been lost, trying to reclaim it. Or maybe it's just the fact that I like small towns. From Route 66, I'm Jan Scott. Get your kicks on what's left. This is Eric, home of Roger Miller, the country western singer. It's also a town that's attempting to survive the interstate. Uh, Eric also has this museum in back of us, and on all four corners of every building here, the uh, doors face diagonally. Also, there's a cop from the 1930s. His ghost is supposed to live here in this town, and people have been known to uh, be pulled over in the middle of the night by a police officer in a 1938 Ford. Go figure. Get your kicks on Route 66. This is Sayre on Route 66 in front of the old Stovell movie theater. Lots of cowboys used to come here for their Saturday night dates. Not anymore. The Beecham County Courthouse was used as the state capital in John Ford's Grapes of Wrath in the 1930s, and not much has changed with Sayre, Oklahoma, since then. Get your kicks on Route 66. Get your kicks on Route 66. Oklahoma is one of the few surviving cities on Route 66 in Oklahoma. Here in Elk City, Oklahoma, they're big into spiritual healing, just like we are in Boulder. This is the largest oil rig in the world, 179 feet tall. It can drill a hole 10 feet wide, 4,000 feet deep. Disassembled, they've taken it to the Aleutian Islands, and it's sitting right here in Elk City. Uh, one of the largest oil basins in America was discovered right here in Elk City. Thus the rig. It's the tenth wonder of the world. Get your kicks on Route 66. St. Louis, Joplin, Missouri, Oklahoma City looks mighty pretty. You see Amarillo, Gallup, New Mexico, Blackstaff, Arizona, don't forget Winona, Kingsman, Boston, San Bernardino, won't you get hit to this kind of tip? California trip Get your kicks on Route 66 This is the Holy Family Cemetery 
in Canute on Route 66. It's a Catholic cemetery. And there's the Holy Family. Now I want you to know that these people in Texas and Oklahoma along Route 66 are neat freaks. I have never seen so many neat freaks in my entire life. We have not found one piece of debris, not one piece of litter in Texas or Oklahoma. Texas is the don't mess with me state, not a piece of litter. Oklahoma, the same thing. Every grave site that we have visited as we have traveled along the byways and highways of Route 66, not a piece of litter. Ladies and gentlemen, clean freaks are running things in Oklahoma and Texas on Route 66. Kidding, just kidding, 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 kidding. In Clinton, Oklahoma, this is the Route 66 Museum, the largest of all the museums that we've seen in all five of our road trip series. In just a second, we're going to go inside and talk with someone who was alive during the Dust Bowl days and who lived through Route 66 right here in uh, Clinton, Oklahoma. Of course, the highway is all but shut down and gone now. But the museum lives on, and inside, well, some interesting things to come. Here's a 64 Corvette, 65 Mustang, and the entrance to the Route 66 Museum. Hi, my name is Jeff Moore. I'd like to welcome you to the Route 66 Museum here in Clinton, Oklahoma. Often on Route 66, they had um, side stores along the highway that to bring people in, they would show crazy things like live poisonous rattlesnakes or two-headed calves. So this is a reproduction of a sign that you might see along Route 66. They actually had two-headed calves? Well, oftentimes. Usually they didn't live very long, so oftentimes they were stuffed. <laughs> and oh my baby God. rattlers here. Baby rattlers? No, I don't want to see those. No, I don't think so. What's Careful in there? now, don't let them bite. <laughs> Nothing in there. The world's largest curio cabinet. Well, this is more interesting than we can possibly have on our television show. <laughs> I'm sure there's an old lady someplace that will like this stuff. Oh my goodness, look at those! This room covers the decade of the 20s, and Route 66 started in 1926. This is a road grader that were very similar to the type used to grade the road for Route 66, and they were often horse powered. The major event on Route 66 in the 30s was the Dust Bowl. Whoa. John Steinbeck's book, John Steinbeck's book, Grapes of Wrath, covers the life of a family that moves from Oklahoma to California due to the Dust Bowl. So this exhibit kind of interprets that story. Ready, go. During the 40s in World War II, the Army used Route 66 to, to uh, transport troops and supplies, which actually eventually led to the downfall because it tore up the road in various places. This is a Jeep from the World War II era, and this is what might be seen driving down Route 66. Some of the military bases that were on the route and off the route. This is an exhibit on the 50s, and the 50s can be characterized as a lot of traffic and transportation and a lot of families starting to take uh, vacations on Route 66, and here we have a diner with a 
know where we're going. Into the 60s. All right. Oh, we see these all over Boulder. What do you call this room? This is our 60s room. Mm -hmm. And 60s was another time of family vacations, but you also had the hippies that moved and took their pilgrimage west to California. It's the, it's the Grateful Dead family. The Dead. Ashbury District and San Francisco and, and LA, Route 66 was still the primary road to California. Is that right? Oh, nice Volkswagen. Who did this Volkswagen? We did. This the great decade of Route 66, 1970. By this time, the interstates had taken over. Why do you call this the gray area or the gray room? Well, it's basically the demise of Route 66. By this time, the interstates had pretty much taken over, and only a few cities were still serviced by Route 66 actually going through. This is supposed to be the 70s, is that it? Yeah, the discontent in the country. You guys don't like Marlon Brando and, or cats? Is that it? I don't get it. Where'd you go? <laughs> Well, he's the godfather. Well, actually, we're, we're doing a little well. We have people, last month we had people from 28 different countries, and we're having people from all 50 states and all over the world, and kind of exciting to, uh, even though the road is actually not being used as an official U.S. highway, a lot of people are becoming reinterested in Route 66. Have you get any Elvis fans in here? Oh, plenty. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And Bill Clinton fans? Well, we are Clinton, Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we've had people that come in like the name, and we've had people come in and want to change the name, so you get a little bit of everybody. I'm Dr. Walter Mason, the owner of the Best Western Trade Winds Inn here at Clinton. Mm -hmm. uh, we're directly across the street from the U.S. Route 66 Museum, which is the only one in the United States of its kind. It was opened approximately almost a year ago. Yeah. So, uh, Walter, you know what? Uh, you knew Elvis Presley? Well, I saw him only one time. Uh -huh. Did he, he give you a Lincoln? No, sir, he did not. Because <laughs> he gave out a lot of Cadillacs and Lincolns, no, you know. No, sir, he was, uh, he was using the trade winds when he was driving. He was a, you got to remember that Elvis was a truck driver and he liked to drive. And he, always, he came in always at around midnight under his uh, manager's name, uh, Joe Epicito, I believe is the name. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they always had four rooms and three Cadillacs and a special built vehicle. What year was this? This is in the 1960s. 1960s? This is Elvis himself? Yes, sir. This is Elvis himself. Oh, my God. Did Priscilla come with him? I, that I don't know. No. Uh, they, there was three Cadillacs and an entourage of people in four different rooms. Did, he didn't give you a Cadillac or anything? No, sir. He did not. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, Elvis was staying here and would always leave right after early lunch uh, every day uh, around and, and but uh, our head housekeeper at that time found out that it was having room service for Elvis Presley yeah and uh, <laughs> she went downtown and spread the good word around all over oh and, uh, that Elvis was here and this area right immediately behind the restaurant and all was covered with it was in the summertime with several hundred children and a lot of other people inside can, can you show us one of the rooms he stayed in Sure, I'd be glad to. If, if it's not occupied right now, he'd stay always basically himself Maybe three, three times in two, room 215 and 238. Where, whereabouts are they? Are they nearby? Or? Yes, we're right there. At the, uh, right the green Let room me right see. There. Can you point them out? And I'll just, we'll just zoom in on. Which which door is it? It's the uh, farthest one south upstairs. Farthest one south, there it is. 215, and it's connects through to uh, it's a large, nice king room. I'll be glad to show it to you in just a few minutes. Oh, that's okay. I can see it from and there. And it's uh, two connects with 238. And it's, uh, but they always did it use four rooms. But Elvis himself stayed in, we know, in that room three times. And one other time he stayed in another place. All right. This is good. That, I appreciate it very much. Thanks a lot. Would you like to let me give it to you this literature on it? Let's see if this woman... Ma'am, did you know that Elvis stayed here? Pardon? 
Did you know that Elvis Presley stayed here? No, I'm from Germany. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Do you know who Elvis is? Elvis. Yes, I know. Elvis stayed here. Oh. You're supposed to bow and kiss the ground here. This oh. is sacred now. I'm Elvis just Presley. I want to tell you. Um, do you know where 66 Museum is? Yes, ma'am. Right there. Right across oh. the street. Would you, would you like to have some information on Elvis Presley? Oh. Elvis. Elvis, Elvis stayed here. Elvis stayed. You just go over here. I'm now. not the biggest Elvis. Were you in the Olympics? <laughs> were you part of the Olympics? No. You were in the German swimming team. No. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you. We have a real. Uh, we'd be glad to show you. Uh, Elvis stayed here, and uh, Miss Mason and myself donated the ground for this museum. Oh, was that right? Yes. Sir. And uh, mm -hmm. there was another museum here called the Western Oklahoma Trails Museum. And it was occupied uh, and extended. And then last year, why the state and federal government, plus a, a lot of money raised locally, it's the only one in the United States. And this one was featured on the front page of the New York Times. Mm -hmm. And there was reporters staying here at the trade winds from San Francisco and Seattle and Phoenix, besides New York. Now I have another question for you. Yes, sir. That, do, was Elvis actually a, a truck driver, a long distance truck driver? Yes, sir. He oh, was really? He, he was a road driver? He was before he became famous. This is Pop Hicks here in Clinton. It's been open forever. It's open 24 hours a day. This is a, an authentic Route 66 restaurant. It's been written about in all the guidebooks. Now, the interesting part about this restaurant is when you walk in, there are two lines of tables in the very front that connect the tables all together. One set of tables are for the local politicians, state representatives, sheriff, uh, mayor, those folks. Uh, the other set of tables are for local gossip. Yeah, Jan Scott tonight's road trip, Route 60 said, headed toward Chicago. This is where the politicians sit, and there are none of them there, right? <laughs> what goes on over here? And I heard that this table is if you got if you married and you bring your wife back here, you could lose her here. <laughs> I, could, I could see with you guys, she'd be in a lot of trouble. I don't know. Wait a minute. Most husbands are, because I'm a woman getting son of a gun. And that's, that's what I heard. A whiskey drinking woman getting son of a gun. You dang right. You dang right. Yep. And what I heard. I have been accused of it. I've been accused of everything. <clears throat> and some of them I've even done, probably. Uh -huh. Yep. Some man of them I've even man done. after my own heart. Is your wife here with you today? No. No, 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 every good wife I have, their husbands would come get them at this table. They knew, they knew where they'd be. <laughs> well, thanks. Nice visiting with you. We have to go. Look, you play dominoes, huh? No. I guess I think that's what it looks like. No. <laughs> well, she's a little crap one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. More crap. I got a knife on the back before I get to the boat. <laughs> okay, I'll get a card. You want one of our cards? Fatten them up and get them in good shape. This is Timothy McVeigh and Nichols. Yeah. What, what, then what should they do? Eat, like feed them? Yeah, we need to keep them around here for a while. Yeah, they're too fine. Keep Lost them around for a while. If the old codger sit over here, who are you guys? <laughs> You're the, the Bucks. This is the educational table back Did? here. Which <laughs> kid you come back here? Yeah. You just want old codgers to go up there, then yeah. <laughs> they all must be resting at home because they're not in here. We know, huh? we know, we know. They'll be here in the morning. <laughs> They'll be here in the morning, yeah. Isn't that about right? <laughs> Everybody's car is right now. <laughs> you hear all the gossip in the morning, not over there, all the politicians. Uh, so what's the latest gossip in Clinton? Uh, once Just the biggest dirt everything. right now. Okay. Somebody run off with somebody's life. Oh somebody. no, that doesn't happen here. <laughs> somebody run off with somebody. They all run to this table. If you want it, they all come to this table and for therapy. Have... This is this is like the therapeutic community. Yeah, right. <laughs> is it free? Pretty much, huh? Oh yeah. I bet you don't have a therapist in this community, huh? Is there a psychologist in this community? That that TV, big TV guy that came here from Denver the day he came, remember him? <laughs> we couldn't get rid of him. If it can be done, it, it can be done here in Clinton. I bet, right here at this table. That's why I'm trying to get out of here. <laughs> 
Yeah. Barbecue King Gunny's got, got, got that face, doesn't he? How you doing? Jan Scott, big TV star from Denver. How are you? Hi. <laughs> well, folks, nice to see you. Be careful. And we'll right here. We will. Even if we have to do it on TV. <laughs> Goodbye. See you. Bye. What's her name? Taylor. Taylor, hi. Stand her up. Oh, she's no, she looks cute, just the way she is. She's beautiful. That way you do it. Oh, yeah, sweetheart. Stand up in the chair. Hi there. I don't want to scare her. Oh, you ain't scared. All right. Stand her up. Here with a purse. This is the whole family here, huh? Where's the How you doing? Very nice. Here's your purse. Here you go. Aww. Here's your purse. Hi, honey. Here's your purse. Put your purse on. Put your purse on. Put your purse on. Very pretty. Put this in a funny purse. Wave it. Wave. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> See you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to gas up here at the uh, local Total Petroleum Station. This one, just off I-40. Uh, incidentally, you can get a um, Oklahoma uh, 1996 road trip guide for uh, Oklahoma. You can also get a fleet card here, a uh, frequent flyer card. It's Total Petroleum, just so you know, has 23,000 gas stations around the country. They got a cash injection in 1993 of $250 million, and they just started buying gas stations all across the country, including APCO, Roadrunner, Vickers, and uh, you see these Total stations everywhere. So we're going to give you a little tour of this one. Yeah. It had three ahead of it. And the sign right there. Make sure you grab yourself a cup of coffee or a drink off the fountain. It's on the house. Then we have four showers in the truck stop. If they fuel up, the showers are free. Handicap showers just for truckers. Uh huh. We can use it. We use it for handicap reasons as well as joint truckers, mm -hmm. husband and wife, or um, father husband son. Husband and wife. Yeah. Well, this is like <laughs> you can take a shower. With your friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, husband and wife. Um, a lot of times we have father and son. Uh huh. Um, kids. Uh huh. Yeah. And you know, and they, this summer was really a unique experience for me because I didn't realize how many kids traveled with their dads that are truckers. And even if it rains and there's not a trucker here, we come and pick it up, take messages for the truckers that are out in the lot. Really? If at all possible, we do. We run over here. Which is the most favorite air freshener that people the, buy? The most favorite yeah. <laughs> is the spice That's for a gentleman trucker. A gentleman trucker? Uh -huh, Let's yeah. see. We'll hold that up. Spice. Uh huh. There's the spice. And women truckers, which one do they like? And and they'll they'll purchase the jasmine or the the bouquet. Uh, okay. It's our old pal Natalie, ladies and gentlemen, here at the total in uh, where the heck am I? Okima. Okima, <laughs> Oklahoma. Somewhere is not far from Route 66. Lost on this insane journey traveling to Chicago. Jan Scott tonight eats big sandwiches coming up next. Famous breakfast burrito. Good, huh? Mm -hmm. This is very good. I kind of like to do mine backwards. I like to eat the dessert first. Go ahead. Sure beats that. That thing we had over at Hardy's at the Mexico station the other night. That sucked. <laughs> And then in Joplin, Missouri, we went to the Demolition Derby races. These people are crazy, man. They're crazy here in Missouri. Huh? Look at these guys. What the hell kind of car is this? Will they let you out on the road with this? The cops pull you over? Huh? Probably not. Bang Probably into them, right? Up. Yeah. Huh? Look at the bumper on this thing. Paint them up and tear them up. <laughs> this is too nice to tear up. You didn't put too many dents no, in today. We, uh, we're going to save it. We're going to run it again in a couple of weeks. Did you win? Uh, we won the prettiest car. We won the prettiest car, and then what happened? We lost the linkage on our transmission. Uh-oh. This is a Cadillac. Lincoln Continental. Lincoln Continental. Excuse me. I don't know what Lincoln the hell. Continental. The girls painted one side, and the boys painted the other side. Uh-huh. girls' night out, and the boys' night out. 
You, you can you can figure out which one. Uh oh. Okay. Let's see. Oh yeah, this is the guy side over here, huh? It's cool. <laughs> Oh, look at these teeth. A little dental work. thank Ford for the Windstar they gave us to travel across the country on Route 66, total petroleum for the gasoline. These are some of the uh, books and magazines we use. Route 66 magazine comes out of Kingman, Arizona four times a year. Paul Taylor's publication. He and his wife do it out there in the middle of the desert. Excellent publication. Uh, this is Bob Moore's A Guide to the Mother Road, Route 66. Excellent guide as long as you follow it from Chicago to uh, L.A. And Searching for 66, this is Tom Teague's book. Well, Jan Scott here with you in Tulsa, Oklahoma, on the Mother Road. 